Hello, I'm Marcello Rolando, the Reasonable Voice, thanking you for joining us and becoming one of the reasonable voices heard round the world. Electoral College, Insurrection, Impeachment 2, Inauguration, Too Much? Russian snowballs thrown at Putin's uniforms for freedom fighter, thousands arrested, versus America's five dead by citizen insurrection at U.S. Capitol, walking away. 1787 Compromise. Neither Congress nor uninformed mobs, but an electoral college elects our POTUS. When congressional staff snatches from the jaws of a tyrant's defeat, our 46 paper electoral college victory ballots. Before a trumped mob guts our oldest branch of government, severing ties with peaceful transition, hoping, Here's Donny! Reflecting on Trump senators, Patrick Henry might revise. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me unity, or give us 400,000 deaths by presidential failure. Too many chokeholds on American accountability to allow $15 minimum wage to essential workers. Too much Rand Paul intellectual imbalance for too self-absorbed Senate to relinquish too repetitive abuse of power. Too much joshing around, brandishing Heil fist aloft, enabling too far gone on cruise to treason. Too many faux patriots allowed to just walk on bye-bye, after too many blocked National Guard from aiding and abetting too few Capitol Police. Too little checks and balances on too much costumed buffoonery, too few remembering only peaceful assembly need apply. Too many electing Biden failing to feel the fear of too many maskless invaders. Too many confusing pipe bombs with ballots. Too minuscule knowledge of presidential pardon power relegating too foolish with the devil made me do it. Too little enabling for balance of power. Too much desertion for sacred honor parchment written by too many old white males bestowing too few freedom-deserving generations with too minute congressional equality and justice. Too little desire for amendments defending hued minorities against too much malice aforethought. So then who will pay the price for high crimes in the wake of he who, thinking himself the second coming, gave rise again to secession, confirming too often and too long we have been too little united? What if unity is meant to be too high a road for too many to travel without first shining a light for the too herd oriented who too willingly deny putting their own houses in order before attacking that chamber too often rented for too many services rendered? When will tight-fisted money changers stop providing parlor worshippers cover charges at the altar of a Wall Street of ill repute? Where are the proud boys and girls too wise to remain rooted in our historical self-imposed discontent? Why are Americans who believe in their divine right to be the right denying necessary stewardship of a raped planet Earth over-consuming to diminish all life upon it? How can we by example exude a recaptured civics oasis of genuine all-inclusive patriotism dedicated to a collective civic duty peacefully transforming supreme citizens united of economic elitists to a conglomerate of united citizenry ever-evolving in constitutional awareness lifting all to their higher ground of solid rock finally becoming a city of light knowing the glow from that fire can truly light the world. Yet in a mind set by a nation of people so mesmerized by personal devices, indoctrinated by the redundancy of scrolling talking heads, inundated by myths of past glories, indoctrinated with education half-truths, missing the half has never been told, hoodwinked by religious hypocrites who believe faith blesses only those genuflecting before the street's CEOs. Can any nation so conceived and so dedicated long endure? Maybe greatness comes from unity that nourishes individual exceptionalism. Perhaps our new normal can purge past mistakes by a present that refuses to repeat them for future generations. If an elbow bump reserves, a mask protects, and social distancing defends, what couldn't we do together to eradicate our history replete with whipping posts, emotional scars, mental health neglect, domestic rape, 
foreign pillage, and save love thy neighbor as thyself from white supremacist mob rule. Bullies don't pardon their pawns. They take their money for fraudulent conspiracies, then sacrifice them. Only a traitor could think that makes America great, and only those indoctrinated as some Europeans were in the 1930s would fight for it. It takes a village to enable the unethical to blow out America's soul, because there are corporate-induced shortages created to profit off families and small businesses during COVID-19, always follow the money. The greater danger to America is not the herd mentality that pummeled us into facing existential issues we've ignored, but those we've elected to occupy our attacked Capitol building who have been siphoning off our exceptionalism for decades, sacrificing our country and their constituents to the demagogues of party politics. To be a United States of America requires internalizing and living one simple truth. The rising tide of women, gays, Native Americans, Latinx, African Americans, and immigrants also lifts all those European descendants who have forgotten who built their boats that keep them afloat. Thank you, and join us. Become one of the reasonable voices heard round the world.